Hey guys, what's going on? Tony Maritato here, physical therapist, and I'm gonna to talk to you today about making the decision, should you become a physical therapist in 2020? Is this the right career for you? Are there better paths? What are the pros? What are the cons? And how can you make that decision? So let me tell you a little bit about myself first. I graduated PT school at the end of 2005. I was a practice owner back since 2002. My bachelor's degree was in kinesiology. I was a strength coach. I got hired on by a local hospital down in Sarasota, Florida, and I fell in love with the profession of physical therapy. I realized that I didn't really wanna work with young athletes. I didn't really wanna work in professional sports or collegiate sports. I could make life-changing, um, have life-changing benefits and effects on normal adult individuals in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I could help somebody stay in their house and avoid a nursing home. I could help people get out of a wheelchair and start walking again. These were life-changing events that I just, I, I couldn't find myself achieving in the traditional strength and conditioning world. So I naturally gravitated toward that clientele. And as I did, I started to realize that if I really wanted to serve that population, I needed to become a physical therapist. Now, out of undergrad, back in 2000, I got hired on as an exercise tech personal trainer for a local hospital organization. I was working in one of their outpatient orthopedic physical therapy clinics, doing a lot of like wellness programming and helping their clientele. But one of the things that was, was so frustrating to me was I wasn't able to affect the kind of positive change that I wanted to. You know, from high school, I've always been kind of more entrepreneurial. I've been more driven to be a business owner. I've always had a hand in some sort of business. And working for a large corporate employer like that, there were just too many layers of management above me where even if I wanted to make a change to a simple intake form, I couldn't do it, right? All these layers and layers of approval and red tape just took too long. So what I did was I worked for the hospital for about a year, I saved every penny I could, and then I went and opened a personal training studio. It was a little 800 square foot space, kind of like you see behind me right now. Um, I wasn't a physical therapist, but I loved working with a geriatric adult active population. And so as a personal trainer, I had the, the freedom to do what I wanted to do. Now, shortly after opening that studio, I recruited a physical therapist, and together we created Total Therapy Solutions, which is an outpatient physical therapy practice. Um, through you know, a, a turn of good fortune, I was able to take the years between 2003 and 2005 and go back and get my master's degree in physical therapy. But what's different about that time compared to this time is I already had a physical therapy practice that was successful. We had two locations before I left for college to get my master's degree. I already had proven self-pay um, success in the form of personal training. So when I went to school, tuition was dirt cheap at that time. I was able to get my full master's degree without taking out a single student loan. I was able to invest revenue from the business and grow while learning. That's a very different situation than students coming out today with $100,000, $200,000 in student loans. The, the salaries today relative to the salaries back in the mid 2000s, not that much different. We, we know professionally we're facing reimbursement declines every single year. There's more pressure on payers to reduce reimbursement. And so if you're not ready and willing to move to more of a hybrid practice model, more of a cash-based practice model, you're really not gonna be able to survive in the conventional physical therapy outpatient clinic role. So now my question to you because it really depends. What are your goals? If you want to become a physical therapist because you're passionate about helping people and want to be the person delivering care, 
and you plan to work for a large hospital organization, skilled nursing facility, you wanna do in-home, home health services, then absolutely, it's an amazing profession. It's rewarding. I would encourage you to be smart and make the financial decision um, based on the cost of your education, how quickly you can get through the program, and what school is teaching you to, to prepare you for what you want to do specifically. But if you're looking at physical therapy with the hopes and dreams of practice ownership, I might point you in a different direction. A conversation I have with students because I'm a CI, um, students come through the facility. One of my, my most popular conversations is I ask, you know, why did you decide to go to physical therapy school? And a lot of times the question or the answer is because I just, I love helping people. I love working with people, getting to know people. And then my next question is, okay, so if you really want to help people, you really want to work with, let's say, the Medicare beneficiary population. If you become a physical therapist today, how many people can you help? Maybe you're seeing patients twice a week. You're working 40 hours a week. You're helping 20 people at a time, right? Okay, pretty reasonable, simple math. Now let's say you learn how to grow a physical therapy business. You can still become a physical therapist and you can still treat patients on the side because you love treating patients. But in addition to that, you learn how to run and operate a physical therapy business. Now you employ 10 clinicians and those 10 clinicians are seeing 20 people at a time, at a week, however you wanna look at it. Now you're helping 200 people instead of 20 people, right? And that's one practice. Imagine you have 10 practices, you're helping 20 or 2,000 people at a time instead of 20 people. So I want you to really dig deep for a minute. I want you to think about what it is that you're truly passionate about. If you want to be involved in patient care as a full-time occupation and you want the feeling of helping those people directly, you delivering the patient care, absolutely. The profession is amazing, go ahead and do it. And if you can do it at a lower cost, that's what I would encourage because you really learn patient care after you graduate. You know, save, uh, save the money for continuing ads after graduation. Find the people who are doing what you, you wanna do, learn from them. Um, school is really just to give you a foundation, but true clinical expertise comes in the clinic. You cannot get that in an educational program. But if your goal is practice ownership, if your goal is business development, I always say, I treat patients because I love treating patients. I run my business because I want financial security and independence for myself and my family. If that is you, I would strongly encourage you to consider learning the business aspect first, building the business you wanna build first, and then using the revenue and the process, profits from that business to pay your way through school. That's just my take. It's 2020. I think the, the climate is changing, the educational system is changing, and it's time for us to make smart financial decisions before we just follow our dreams and our passions. Because if we have the money to support it, we can do anything we want after that. Guys, I hope this perspective was helpful. If you have comments, if you have questions, if you agree or disagree, let me know below and take a minute to subscribe to the channel. Guys, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.